So welcome, welcome to the future of design collaboration. We are super excited for today's webinar. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name is Vanessa and I am the global training manager here at 2020. Um, I just passed my 15 year anniversary. I cannot even believe that. Um, but before I started at 2020, I was a kitchen designer and used 2020 design. Uh, it feels like forever ago, though. So <laughs> I hope that I can share a few things that I feel are useful from a designer's perspective um, in that case. But I'm really excited to contrast some of my comments to our guests today. So first up, John Morgan, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm John Morgan, and um, I'm a CEO of Green Forest Cabinetry. Done a lot of things in the industry over the years. So you may know, know me from some other lives, lives, previous lives. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I am in during this, uh, during this presentation, I'm going to take the perspective of the manufacturer. I'm really going to kind of wear the business hat today, um, uh, because all of us, the, the creativity side is the fun side, but at the end of the day, we all got to pay bills, right? So we got to pay bills. So I'm going to wear the, uh, the, the business hat in this discussion today. I love it. I love it. And sitting next to John is Emily McCollum. Ellen, Emily, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, yes, I'm Emily McCollum. I am the Director of Marketing and Business Development at Green Forest Cabinetry. Uh, one of my main focuses uh, at Green Forest in my role is to really hone in on what our designers need or our dealers need, if you will, and especially when it comes to what our dealers' clients so it's it's very it's it's a very important aspect that I think a lot of people look over or overlook um, that leads to a successful business. No, absolutely. I'm really excited. I know you've got some fun things to share throughout today's presentation. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look though. First, you guys know the rules of webinars because we're so good at them now, right? <laughs> Um, like many webinars, this is CEU accredited by NKBA and NARI, so um, definitely take advantage of that and know that we're going to break this down into four main objectives. Our first objective, talk a lot about best practices. Um, of course, setting expectations in virtual meetings seems like it should be a piece of cake by now, but there's some really cool tools that you already probably have at your fingertips. We want to make sure you're taking advantage of those. The second objective, um, let's talk a little bit about kind of that final stage of um, a sale and really making sure your design proposals are standing out. We'll look at a couple of different tools there. We're going to talk about some techniques of working with your clients. Um, and one big, big effort here is making sure we can stay organized because I don't, I don't know how you guys do it today. I'm so proud of you for <laughs> doing everything you do in such a crazy busy time and a challenging time with for different reasons. And then the last thing we're going to really um, talk about are a couple secrets or fun tips along the way, just to make sure we're keeping our our different um, designs and different sales process just moving. Let's keep these clients moving. Let's keep them happy. Um, but let's make sure we're not dropping the ball on anything too. Okay. So first up, I have a question for everybody. So do me a favor and leverage that questions box. And I'd like to know from everyone, do you feel today that your business as it stands today is more of a physical business, like a brick and mortar showroom? Uh, maybe you might say traditional business or a more of a digital business. Maybe you're doing a lot of online design or however you interpret digital. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But do you picture your business more physical or more digital? Any comments? Don't forget, just plug those into the questions box there. So Emily, can we talk a little bit about? Oh, we already have some? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we're at 50-50 right now. <laughs> so a little bit of both. Yeah, we can't see those. So if you want to read a couple out loud, that'll help us. No, it's it's interesting. Um, now they're all over the board. Some people are giving me a percentage, like 80% digital, mostly digital, mostly physical, a little of both. Like it's a big, big mix. So I want to start with Emily. Um, give us a little bit of feedback. How do you see today's business in, in what you guys do? Do you see it more physical or more digital? 
so it it we are definitely it, we definitely have that touch and feel component in our industry so it, so it's a little more physical right but um what what you know our 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 clients and us as shoppers and our clients we want to be able to feel things we want to hold that sample door we want to uh you know try on the design if you will i was looking for some terms sorry try on the design um you know we want to okay. be able to feel the quality and and the and the finishes of anything and really hold that cold weight of a countertop sample if you will yeah so definitely that part i can i hear it's like kind of leaning physical right but then when i throw the word digital at you any thoughts well, we have no choice we have to evolve digitally i mean we have to. um okay. especially these days so i guess we would look at the client first right what are their needs exactly yeah let's, let's take a look at that for a second so the hustle and bustle of life everyone is very busy and they don't want to waste time going back and forth to visit you know and especially since COVID has happened uh people are a little hesitant to interact and meet in and physically in a physical environment if you will um so basically yeah you have to take that experience right the experience of physical and make it digital and you have to get yeah you have to get uh, uh creative with it um and piggybacking that uh i mean we know going back to the customer views we know that obviously their living spaces are very very high priority um they trust this digital decision making they trust digital payment mm -hmm. options yeah. um you know for personally i when i go to amazon or wherever i go i go to that filter setting and do four stars and up because those are the only products i want to look at um so, so i trust those reviews and i i trust i trust things yeah. digitally so whether it's groceries or your or right. uh ordering a dinner tonight or amazon everybody's delivering that way and we need to as well exactly because today i think i think there's a there's a certain demand of uh, being able to understand for the customer to be able to understand and comprehend the product and feel comfortable with what they're purchasing that uh, they're making the right decision and purchasing that product and hopefully making that right decision leads them to their happy place. Yeah, I love these examples because obviously we, I think a lot of times we think to some of the conveniences we have today. Um, so I think we're going to kind of push the conversation a little bit and say like, okay, so as a kitchen and bath designer, how can my business be both? And this is where we're seeing a lot more of this trend leaning towards this word digital. No, it sounds kind of crazy if you haven't heard of it, but definitely take some time. If you are interested in marketing, if you're interested in retail, this is something that's actually been around for a few years, but taking a digital approach um, to how we go to market is just um, such an interesting way to really take those physical pieces that we really need and enjoy, like you said, try on our space, um, but also have a little bit more of the details and the analytics of the digital side too. So if I were to ask you guys a question um, about, you know, digital, think like maybe augmented reality or virtual reality, like what are some of the first things that come to mind? Well, I would say that, um, you know, if I could take this one, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, we think about um, the experiences that people have, um, you know, whether, uh, how do you envision yourself in a space that's typically uh, physical, but you need to do it digitally? And you think about, I know you'll show some examples later on about how you immerse yourself into um, a future room, whether you're standing there with your iPhone and turning right and left. And um, years ago, I used to jokingly say, you know, you're standing in a 1975 kitchen and it's your current house and you're trying to feel like or know or understand what 2022 
is going to feel like. Not 2021, because that's already passed us, 2022. What's my space going to look like that? So how do we actually share that? And there's so many technologies out there. And I know in your future slides here, you're going to be showing some options when it comes to screens, touch screens, or even phones and so forth. But it's about immersing yourself. And if I can add one other thing, too, from a business standpoint, because I'm going to put the business hat on, uh, we always jokingly say that, you know, my job in the business is to figure out how to pay for things. So I want to talk to the people who are online right now that have to figure out how to make the business work. Um, you know, and to be able to pay the salaries, to be able to take care of everything you need business-wise. Well, so much of that really comes from being able to make it easy for your customer to have that digital experience that speeds up the sales cycle, right? Because closing a deal, let's, if we think about a sales cycle, you need to prospect, you need to, to then spec product, and then you need to come to agreement, then you have to close a deal, then you have to install it. Well, the faster somebody can make selections, the faster somebody can come to an agreement with you, the faster you can get contracts and deposits in your hands, the faster you can start the job, the faster you can finish it, the faster you can get that final payment to you, that gives you more time to do even more jobs. So at the end of the day, you can actually sell more, but also be making more because you've got a whole team of people within your company you've got to feed, and that's really important. And digital does nothing but speed that process up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I mean, it, it just, when you hear that, I'm sure there's a lot of people nodding their head like, yeah, yeah, of course, that totally makes sense. Let's see if we can make this faster. Now, let me kind of push it to the extreme for a second. And in a couple examples I want to talk about before we dive into a 2020 or a kitchen and bath example, because um, sometimes we like to go big, right? Who watched the Olympics and you saw the drone craziness? Or maybe you've gone to a a sporting event recently or seen some of these really, really wild um, billboards that are coming out. So on the left hand side of the screen, this is a billboard in Tokyo. If you haven't seen it, like it literally has stopped traffic. <laughs> now it's wild and crazy. And this little guy on the right, well, think of this like mix reality of a, a different way of just really getting the crowd excited, right? Now are we doing this in our design work at the moment? <laughs> I don't know about having our our, uh, our mascot on the screen here, but there are just so many different examples where we're seeing like the wow factor and the excitement. Do you think there's still a lot of value to that? Is that a way to stand out as a kitchen and bath designer is to in using digital or digital technology? Sure, you know what, Vanessa, people have to be excited, right? Um, if they're going to spend dollars with you, their hard-earned money, you have to excite them. You have to paint that dream. Um, you know, so much of this is being able to create that reality where they really can see themselves in that environment. I don't doubt, I know we're not here today, but I don't doubt that in the very near future might not be a Panther or in my case, a Baltimore Raven flying through the stadium. <laughs> Um, but, it, but you know, it could very well, very shortly be your client actually walking through the room and they can see themselves and visualize themselves in that room because technology is changing that quickly. It's yeah. so dumb. No, and but, there has been some comments in the questions box about, you know, things like the Oculus glasses and about some of these things that they are starting to integrate into their business. So it's super exciting to hear. Now, one more scenario though, because again, we gotta go big, we gotta go like crazy ideas. Um, on the screen, you see this kind of cool augmented retail solution for a dressing room. Now imagine being able to, I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of trying on a lot of clothing or you know, just that process. You just wanna find the right thing. So there was an article that was actually published just yesterday by Smarter News. And they were talking about, and this blows my mind, about the number one um, clothing real, re, retailer in America. Who do you think the number one clothing retailer in America is? Do you guys have any guesses? Amazon. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to say Walmart. No. <laughs> yeah. I Walmart. Well, I, I always say that, Vanessa, because I am somebody who likes to try on clothes, but I have to tell you, I buy 80% of my clothes online now. Yeah, exactly. Like an online interaction, like Emily said earlier, I want to sort by the four stars and up. I want that to be easy. So some of the rumors out there with this whole like surgence of the potential of Amazon is that they're talking about opening up 
department stores, Amazon department stores. Like it kind of sounds backwards because usually we do the brick and mortar first and then digitalize it, but um, wild. And here's some of the things that they're talking about. Okay, now obviously this is not a, a thing today. Um, who knows what it's gonna turn out like, but imagine walking into a store and taking your phone and scanning QR codes on the things you like. And then what's happening is in the background, someone is literally like curating a dressing room for you of all of those things in your size. And then the next part of that, and this is the mind blowing part, um, is actually having like robots or automation filling that dressing room for you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it just sounds like Jetsons, right? It's crazy. But sometimes we have to kind of look outside our day-to-day -day world to kind of get excited or inspired about the potential. What can we do next in our piece of the industry, right? So that's kind of where we're gonna go next. I know those were crazy wild ideas, but kind of fun, fun to look at. Vanessa, before you go next, if I could just say, I just want to reiterate your point. Yeah. I often think that the best things that we do in all of our businesses, we learn from businesses outside of our field, because oftentimes our industry is a few steps behind. So if we can start to see how other industries are progressing, getting more customers, making more money, boy, if we can start to borrow from that, it makes all of us in the kitchen and bath business better. 1,000%. No, it's, it's just, it's so interesting to see, or maybe you just have certain expectations. I'll tell you when I was doing a little bit of research for today's webinar, when I was looking up retail and showrooms, 99% of the things that would come up were articles about car showrooms. You know, so I think there is kind of an expectation of certain industries being ahead and the kitchen and bath industry maybe isn't that one at the top of the list. <laughs> So let's work on that. <laughs> what you see on the screen right now, just as an idea starter, um, is think about what you're doing in your showroom today. So you if you have a physical space or you're meeting in a maybe an agile space with your clients, are there some different ways that you're utilizing different devices, whether that's a screen on the wall, a screen in your hand, <laughs> like a tablet or a phone. Um, the examples you see on the screen are actually our 2020 Ideal Spaces product um, that kind of help you visualize very quickly some scenarios. So definitely more in that digital or digital experience along the way. But I do wanna take it back and remind you, I feel like there was a lot of still love and devotion to thinking about the physical space. So can we talk a little bit, uh, Emily, about some of the spaces that you guys have created at Green Forest and what you're using these for? This is actually probably one of my favorite things that we've done as a company is start creating um, spaces or what we call studio. We're in Studio City right now, if you will. Um, this is another room that we've designed. Um, but each room, and, and the room you're looking at was actually the first room that we designed. And I thought it was, when the whole pandemic hit and everything, I thought it was super important. And I believed, I really believed in the fact that I feel like people should feel comfortable, feel like they can relate to you or, or get to know you somehow. And, and honestly, your environment, whether it be your own home, or your office, it says a lot about you. It's it's personal, you know? So I thought it was important to create a space where we could do thought leadership meetings, um, have interviews, meet with other dealers, anything. And, um, and, and really each space is unique. I'm working on another one right now and it's gonna be fun, but, but it's unique not that this one isn't fun, but, but it's <laughs> unique to the point where we know the purpose. We know our purpose of the meeting and who we're meeting with. We know our audience. It kind of goes back to knowing your client or customer, you know, get inside their head. Um, so, for example, in this space that we're in, it's a little more personal. It's more intimate, whereas the, what you're looking at on the screen, it's, it's, it's more of a, more people can be involved, and it's, a, I feel like a bit more relaxed setting, if you will. Um, but I mean, it, it was really. If everyone has a space like that professionally, your office, why not 
Yeah. Have one digitally too. And we even continue to go into when we're dealing with dealers. So some of this could be thought leadership. You know, this is interview. Uh, the one she's working on right now could be is podcasting. Yeah. Um, you know, each has its purpose. But at the end of the day, um, we have a place where our employees can go to and they can have a professional meeting with somebody and they're not worried about the clutter of their desk or what's behind them or if, whether the fake imagery behind them is fading in and out when their heads are moving. So for us being able to create that physical presence, but in a digital world was really important. And luckily we have space where we could do that, but everybody has a little room somewhere, whether it's home or in their showroom, where they can do something like this and keep a professional experience. Because when we sit on these stools, we know we're in an interview process. When we're in those chairs, like you're looking at on the screen, we know it's more of a fun NKBA chapter or big group type of event. So it actually sets our moods too. No, I like that. And I think I think we can kind of tend to appreciate that more today. Um, there were a couple more comments in the questions box about like, okay, we've used COVID as an excuse for a long time. Like, let's keep moving on. But think about all the things that we probably wouldn't have tried a couple years ago. You guys are talking about podcasting and, and, and having spaces that are very dedicated to a type of work where I feel like that was not, not very common. Well, at least not in my world, but just super interesting. But these physical spaces are still super important. So now yep. let's take it up a notch, okay? In the next slide. Let's take, now this is a rendering, not an actual space, but um, just imagine taking something and creating that, that wow factor, that excitement, adding a little bit of a digital component, simply with, again, the tools you probably have today, and many of you probably do this in your showrooms, right? You've got either a screen on the, on the wall, or what if you had multiple screens? What if it was a touch screen? Um, there's different ways to do things without even plugging devices in now and having it share. Just so much more flexibility than we ever had before if we are able to do you know, a face-to-face -face meeting or a quick link and now you virtually have everybody together. So fun. Yeah. Now, we've talked a little bit about digital, a little bit about um, kind of the physical side. If this is interesting to you, I do want to mention this is probably one of the, the first areas where I started hearing about the term digital and it made sense. If you haven't heard of the Think Lab podcast, Design, um, Design Nerds Anonymous or DNA, this is a really, really, really good podcast. Um, yeah. Episode three was with uh, Megan Sherwin and Amanda Darley and just really interesting perspectives. One uh, works at Mannington and the other works for Keelhauer. Um, so a little bit more on the contract furniture side of things, but again, from really trying to understand the client, understand the end user, how can we really take advantage of all of the technology that we have, even if we are physical or not, they dive deep in this uh, podcast. Good stuff. Now, next up, this is where it's gonna get real fun because I'm gonna demo some things live on my screen. So if anyone here is a 2020 Design Live user, you uh, hopefully will take a couple new things away. But first, I'm gonna poke fun at all the things we've been talking about and say like, why are we in so many meetings every day? How did our world come to this? So are there points in your design process where you kind of look back and think like, maybe that meeting could have been an email. <laughs> maybe we could have sped things up a little bit. Just a minute ago, John was talking about closing deals or moving to the next step faster and faster. So I wanna show you how I might do this in a tool in 2020 Design Live version 13. Um, if you happen to have your phone nearby um, or a tablet, you can actually scan that little QR code in the corner to see what I'm talking about. It's gonna pop up on the next slide too. But what we're gonna look at first is this new feature called design or um, live design. Like I want to actually design live or send something live to my client or to my installer or you name it, anybody on the project to get their immediate feedback. Because how often, um, or maybe some of you are texting um, to communicate. Sometimes we're emailing, sometimes we've got notes over here, sometimes we've got sticky notes. Let's try to maybe minimize that a little bit and make this easier. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my phone right here, right? And in just a second, you're actually gonna see my phone pop up on my screen because I wanna talk real quick about something. Let me get this to come up. 
And I'm using um, a tool called Air Server to, to do this next step, but in just a second, you're going to be able to see my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> so on top of the slide is my iPhone. Okay. So you're on my home screen and all I'm going to do, this is like your two second demo of how to scan this QR code is literally on almost every phone. Now you can just go to the camera and hold it over a QR code in the newest iOS update. Now it has like a literal open me in Chrome button, which makes it even easier. So essentially what I've done is I've already created this design. I'll show it to you in a second. Um, but now I have an instant image of it on any device. Okay. Now the idea with this feature is it's kind of a one time image. Let me close that for just a second and pop over to 2020 design. Now, before I show you this, I do have to say a super huge thank you to Maria stepper -Fenny. She actually did this design and provided it to John and I, so we could show this feature off. I cannot take credit for this, but whether it's a small design, a huge design, anything in between, how often can a picture help clarify some outstanding questions? And today you're already showing a lot of different presentations for your projects, this can be in a line drawing, it can be in a color texture drawing, pick your favorite. And this one, I'm just gonna let it default to texture. And as you can see, we're kind of focused on just that perimeter wall. And all I'm gonna do is go back to the render tab and look for design live share. Okay, now this is a feature that was added in version 13 that just came out recently. So if you're on an older version, you won't have it quite yet until you upgrade to 13. Now the rules with it, there are a couple things to note. One, when you click on this button, it'll push any changes out to that website, if you would. Okay, so in this case, I didn't make any changes, but if I change the color of the flooring or of an appliance or swapped out a cabinet, then every time I click this button, the change will push to that site. Okay, it's not like they're seeing you change every little detail until you push that over. The other big thing to know is it expires after 48 hours. So imagine being able to give your clients some deadlines. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. hey, we, we, we need to go to the next phase. We need to keep this project moving. So um, don't forget, you've got two days to make sure you sign off on this. Otherwise, they're not gonna see this image anymore, okay? Now, when I clicked on that button, nothing fancy happened on my screen, only because I had already had created a design live link, but I can just hit the drop down, go to information and either open or copy that link really fast. I will open it up. Let's bring it back over. And it was right here. Now, one more small tip, and this is just because I'm a huge um, Chrome user. So the internet browser that I'm using is from Chrome. Because I'm in Chrome, the cool thing is I can easily grab this link from the top, copy and paste it wherever, in an email, wherever you want or let's go faster than that. Over on the right hand side, have you ever noticed there's a bunch of little shortcuts here? The stars to bookmark this so you can get back to it. But the ones I'm starting to use more and more is there is a create a QR code right here. When I click on that, it created a QR code. Now the Chrome QR codes, you can determine they, what they are because they always stick a dinosaur in the middle. <laughs> but I can really That's quickly. That's word, I like it. <laughs> hands out, but how fast I just downloaded it. It's in my downloads folder, but there it is. So that's how I actually pulled up a lot of the QR codes for today's presentation. I just pulled these over into my PowerPoint. Okay. Now the other one though, this one's kind of fun. It says, send this page, this button, when I click on it, it will send it to any device that I have that I'm logged into Google Chrome. Okay, because right now I'm logged in as me. I actually have like a personal Gmail account. So if I click on this and hit design NASA, it is sending that to my phone. So the next time I open up Chrome, it'll say tab sent and I just open it up. So no having to like, this link is hideous, right? Like you know, nobody's gonna wanna type that. You wanna copy and paste it. You wanna QR code it. You wanna send it to another device, super fast, super easy. Okay, lots of different things to consider when using Design Live. And then one last note, and then I'll ask, let, ask for a little bit of feedback. Um, I'm a huge fan of this feature because I don't know if you guys have noticed, if you've ever tried to do a Zoom call or a go-to meeting like this or a Teams call, 
2020 design gets pretty power hungry and your fan will start running on your computer and then you're just crossing your fingers that you can keep all your windows open at the same time. <laughs> so let's maybe avoid sharing every bit of our screens and we can just share the bits that are important. Kind of cool. John, Emily, do you guys have any questions, any comments? Would you use this tool? Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I, I agree with you, you know, when it's kind of like being a, an installer, you know, as kitchen designers and dealers, our customers are using professional tools like 2020. So they are going to be very powerful and this makes it the, the ease of use of work with the client so much better. Um, and, you know, and, and for us, you know, I, I, you had a comment earlier about COVID, you know, being able to be digital, if I'm saying that correctly, they, they've had days <laughs> trying to teach me how to say digital uh, between Vanessa and Emily trying to teach me that. But if you're digital, you know, for us, it's really about how do we use tools like this to truly speed up the sales cycle? Because it's not always a matter of people are a little bit afraid to be in a world. It's people are just too freaking busy. You know, mm -hmm. they've got soccer, they've got life. And, and at the end of the day, we and our businesses can't let our clients' lives get in the way of our livelihoods. So being able to meet with them at one o'clock while they're at work instead of having to postpone the 6 p.m. meeting at night not only gives us better lives, but it keeps everything moving more, more quickly so that we can be all that we can be as businesses. And anything we can do like that to cut down the selling cycle does nothing but benefit our customers and the profitability of our businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure everyone on today's webinar will say they're busy. So again, appreciate your time today, but imagine, can this maybe help cut down a little bit of the chaos when it comes to collaborating on so many projects at the same time? It's wild. Hey, I did have a couple questions in the questions box. Somebody did ask, can, can you only use Chrome? No, I just use that um, a lot. And I really enjoy a lot of the shortcuts like I showed with the QR code. There are other ways to create a QR code. You can go out to different websites, literally just Google it. And there's lots of free creators out there. There's also a lot of services out there where they can give you analytics on what's being scanned and how often and what they're, how it's being used. So there's way more you can do with it. But Chrome was just super handy and easy right here. But any internet browser you can uh, use for design live. Uh, live share. Super. One more uh, tech feature, if you would. Let's skip ahead here. And on this one, we're going to talk a little bit about actually a feature we've had a while, but it just got a facelift. Okay. As we consider um, looking at version 13 again, you can now create a 360 degree panoramic that has more than one spot that you're standing in. Okay, so in the next design we're gonna walk over to in a second, there is a large kitchen and then um, a small laundry room off to the side. So anything that kind of has uh, adjacent rooms, anything that's maybe a large space that you have multiple walls, or in my case, I think there was an island in this kitchen. Sometimes it was hard in the single view 360 to see everything. It was still impressive, um, but you couldn't get everything. So let's kind of talk real quick about what that process looks like. Okay, I'm back in 2020 design. And in this case, um, I actually have a few things set up for this to work really well. So let me talk through that just real quick. When I go to presentation, you'll notice I have a bunch of things called named views. If you've never used this tool before, all it is is going in and doing a perspective of some sort. Let me just open one of these up. And when this view opens, you can actually save it as like a camera view in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so let this populate. It's thinking real hard. Here we go. So bottom right hand corner. See how there's like a blank box and it says save views. If you've never used this tool before, I can't tell you this was like probably one of my number one tools for presentations if I ever did anything live in front of a client because you can save the different views and then when you're with them, you just pick the view you want to see. So if in this case I picked Kitchen West, I was standing on the west hand side west hand side wow <laughs> let me go kitchen south and you'll see we're kind of in a little different angle but more in the south end of this this plan and then of course if i pick laundry we would skip over to that space but the interesting thing about those views is they're now leveraged in the multi-point point 360. 
The only thing to watch for though, is to kind of think about your space as if you were the photographer. Okay, so you literally want to look around this space. Um, a lot of times I like to come down and actually turn the camera on. The camera's in the bottom right-hand corner, just so I can see like if I were standing on this west-hand side of the room, this is my kitchen west angle, okay? And like right here was my kitchen south camera shot, if you would, okay? So just picture yourself there. Now with this feature, what you can't do is take your camera outside the room and try to clip it. Some of you experienced designers probably use clipping a lot to like clip past an island or clip past a wall. That gets a little confusing in the 360. So just a heads up. So don't worry about clipping, but literally just picture yourself physically standing in the space, and put your camera there, okay? Then we're gonna save all of those views. So that way, when we come in, let me go back to Kitchen West. Let's pretend we're gonna create a 360. And you're gonna see the screen is gonna look a little different than it used to. Before it was like asking you a bunch of questions about where do you wanna stand? What do you wanna look at? What's your camera height? There's still a few of those questions, but now it's gonna try to base them off the named views that you've saved. So let's let this finish rendering. There we go. I'm clicking the 360 button in the upper left-hand corner and see all these named views. I don't need all of them, but notice I can name certain ones with my directions. So like my west and, and maybe my south and maybe my laundry. If those are the three different points that I kind of want to walk around, those are the three that I would select. I pick my camera height, I pick my resolution, my quality. If you are just trying to see what it'll look like, go small and go medium. This will render fast. But anytime you go higher in either of these, it's going to take longer for it to generate. So let's skip ahead for a second. Let's see, what did that actually look like? If I come over here and you can see the QR code, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my screen again and take a picture or act like I'm taking a picture. Give it a second to share my screen. It's thinking about it. Here it comes. All right, so my little shortcut, we're gonna go grab the camera, grab this QR code. And you can see this is that actual space that I was just in. It's kind of sit this way, so hopefully it's a little bit bigger. I should have done this on my iPad. It would have been even bigger. But every time you see like a little bullseye, that's my camera angle. So now I can tap on that, and it takes me to that spot in the space. Okay, so you just have multiple views that are being leveraged within there. And I can move around and do everything just like a 360 you could before. You could put your phone in cardboard glasses or Google glasses and, and look at this in a very kind of augmented way, right, to be able to see that. The other neat thing is when you have more than one view, there's a little four square icon at the bottom where you can kind of see the different views this way too. Um, I would love to see someone mock up a space that's their actual physical showroom and do like a viewpoint of each display. Imagine you could literally like render every one of your displays in different finishes and different door styles. And now you've just like increased your square footage by pick a number. <laughs> you could do so many different things with this. So um, hopefully you were able to scan that and kind of look at it yourself. But just another, another view, another way to leverage this. And this is a link that when you do go through the whole process, it asks you to plug in an email most designers probably here have said, yeah, I, I just put my own email in and then I share that with my client. So you could share it in similar ways that we did with the live feature. You could create a QR code like I did, or you could just copy and paste the link and send it to them if you'd like. John and Emily, what do you think? That's incredible. Yeah, awesome. I, I was just thinking about how quickly um, you're gonna encourage people to make those decisions because the faster we make them, the faster things get done. Turnover rate. Yeah, that's awesome. No, it's beautiful. No, I remember John, you telling me a story a long time ago, but it's one of my favorites for the 360. Is you met a designer that actually used created these 360s, but then used them as a portfolio piece. Yeah, it was actually um, it was interesting. It was um, I'm trying to think. It was one of our uh, design when 2020, uh, one of the early 2020 design contests. And I can't remember her name. It was a designer in Minnesota, I believe, maybe Wisconsin. Um, and she was taking her 360s 
And what she would do was is she was saving them. And when she would have a prospect or she was even using them on the website as a way to show a portfolio of her uh, mm -hmm. previous designs, very, very high end designer. And it was awesome because people could go in and get an experience of knowing the type of work that she did, number one. You know, but one of my favorite uses actually of it has always been, and Emily and I talk about this often about social media, about, you know, uh, you know keeping up with the Joneses, right? So, um, you know, if uh, my best friend's name is Jeff and I always have to have better stuff than Jeff. So if Jeff has a kitchen and he's sharing it on his, you know, on his social media, she knows Jeff. I hope so, Jeff is yeah, watching. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, if Jeff has a better kitchen on his social media and I could click on it and be able to do the same things that you're doing right now, I have to come and see you and buy a better kitchen than Jeff. Some people call it keeping up with the Joneses. For me, it's keeping up with Jeff. So, um, so all of us, I think, can use that in multiple ways, not just with our current client. It gives you a sense of, or it gives the designer a sense of credibility and, and the, the, the customer a feel of if they're going to be a right match, yep. right? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That totally makes sense. Um, I saw another comment in the questions box. And, and I'm I'm flattered by this comment because this little mock-up is mine. And someone said, "How did you get the lighting to look so good?" I promise you, there was no magic trickery in this one. However, um, if you're not on one of the current versions of 2020 Design, that's probably why you're having trouble with lighting. There were definitely a couple versions that lighting was harder back in the day and it's gotten better and easier. If you're on 2020 Design Live, there's a new rendering engine. And um, in like the last version of 12, I think that was 12.5, we added some more functionality with uh, different filters. And in 13, that has even improved and that will continue to improve. So if you're not in the most current version, definitely check that out. Otherwise, you actually can kind of see in the 360, I did place my own lights as well as just leveraging the overall lighting. So um, I would say almost all the time I'm placing a lot of my own overall lighting, regardless of if that is in your plan or not, <laughs> just to make sure we can dial up that that lighting, right? Yeah. Recess lighting is so... It so, is. It can be I mean, so tricky. I never thought of that. So that was a yeah. good point. Yeah. Now, as a little bit of a, a heads up, um, what are we in September next month in October, we are going to do another webinar. Um, and I'll give you a little hint. Lighting is the main topic. So stay tuned for that one. <laughs> Still working on a few details, but that's going to be a good one. Okay, guys, what are we at? Oh, we have like 15 minutes left. I have one more really big topic and then a few extras. Definitely stick around if you can, because I also have a fun giveaway. So the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, we've really hit hard on making sure this design process is efficient, making sure we're closing sales, all of the things sound great, right? But how? How can you do that? How can you keep organized in such a busy time? How can you make sure that you know, we're not dropping the ball in any parts of our design process. So how do you keep track of things? So I'm going to talk real quick about a tool called 2020 Manager. This is um, a new business process management tool that we recently introduced. And you'll be able to see on the screen here as I take a design and send it over to 2020 Manager. The 2020 Manager is a web-based tool, so a little bit different. It's not in 2020 Design Live. But when I jump out to the web, you're going to see what it did is it took the information from that project and I'll be able to now attach that to a client who I'm tracking each step of their progress. Okay, so in this one, I'm going in and saying, okay, let's link the design that we did. Remember, I had created that already in 2020 Design Live. I can categorize where the stage is of their project. Do I think it's going to close soon? I can even go in and kind of see a little bit more detail um, in pricing and then most importantly I can start organizing all the things that need to happen next so here I'm in my calendar view where I can go ahead and start scheduling important next steps through the design process maybe in this case we want to book an appointment with the installer right and this in this case is right in the web but it does have integration into your personal calendars that you're using uh, but let's make sure that we get all the details in here. You can assign who this is um, 
who who we're meeting this for? Is this assigned to me? Is it assigned to maybe my installer? And who is my client? And save this away. And then of course, let's jump back over and look at here we are, we're in progress on the design. So let's go ahead and say that part maybe is approved so we can complete it. And so what's happening is there's a lot of the stages of the design process are set up in here, but now I can make sure I'm tracking and going to the next step appropriately. Now this view, we just set that up for James, but now let's go over to our friend Dolly, good old Dolly Parton, and check out where her project is. Let's take a look and you can see in this case, I want to create a quote. So I'm going to just go up to PDF and let's customize this a little bit. And you could put in your company name, you could put in a logo. I can't tell you what I would have done for a tool like this as a designer because we like handed every quote and it was very, very tedious. So it's taking all the information that we brought in from 2020 design and putting it into a quote format that I can um, kind of customize and make my own. And then of course, probably the best part of this and goes back and um, hits on that digital context is we have a dashboard, kind of shows you where all your projects are. I'm pretty wimpy today, I don't have very many projects, but <laughs> in the real world, it's so yeah. hard. <laughs> So hard to keep track of all of them. So that's definitely something that if you're interested in, in more information, um, we do have a free trial that you can try for 30 days um, and see if this can just help, you know, streamline some things in your business. Okay, we've got just a couple minutes. John, any questions about manager before we wrap up? <laughs> Did you ask me, Vanessa, or yeah. you asked me? I did. I did. I oh, asked you. Okay. You said a question. I, she's uh, Emily's making Emily's making fun of me because around our office, if somebody wants to be on my good side, they make me a dashboard. Uh. <laughs> I love dashboards, you know, because um, you know, it's um, we all, of course, you know, and even though I'm I'm managing business now. Um, I still love the creative side. That's why we're in this room right now. My love is always on you know, the creative side, but mm -hmm. uh, I know my success comes from being able to control information. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, as a company, you know, we always joke with people that we don't provide cabinetry. We actually specialize in information um, because being able to be accurate in what you offer, uh, what you say, um, being able to collaborate amongst your team, um, make those things easy, scheduling and making sure you're on time. All of those things are so, so important. Um, and even being able to, like I love in our own business, being able to sit with my iPad and at any point, any place I am in the world, being able to tell where my business is and what's going on because of dashboards, that's power, right? Knowledge is power. And I think in our world, we spend so much time on the creativity side that sometimes we don't feed the business well enough and tools like this make it easy to control the business, understand the business and be able to make decisions in the appropriate amount of time because you do have the power of what would you call it like a business process management or something like that, you know, all of that being at your fingertips. So, so mm -hmm. uh, literally you were showing the design stuff, which I love. The whole time you were showing this, Emily was teasing me because she knew how excited I would be about the dashboards. That yeah. and I was like, I need to get a BPM on John to make sure he's doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's so, it's funny because yeah, when you think of that, like I can definitely show and appreciate all of the design pieces, but then I need someone like you to keep that high level. Let's look at the dashboard. Let's track the activity. It's funny, we need each other. We need each other a lot in these yeah, cases. Absolutely, symbiotic relationship. All right, so a couple of things left and I have a giveaway. So first up, you probably have seen a couple of our email campaigns um, about a new training class series that just came out and it's all about showroom sales. This is a very different approach than anything we've ever done with training, but we collaborated with um, an expert, a sales expert in the UK of all places. His name is Simon Akers, and um, he created a couple, a few e-learning courses for us just to help designers appreciate and understand the steps in the sales process. Um, if you're anything like me, I did not um, really have a sales background coming into this business. So that's something that 
can be a little harder for some people than others. You guys are gonna crack up, but my cat is coming up on my desk right now. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's good now she's good now she really wants to try it though um, the other thing about training if you're looking for specific 2020 design training i do want to let you guys know we do have some physical classes um not as many as we used to but we're getting better the pandemic hopefully will go away soon so if you're near the norfolk virginia area uh miami florida or King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Those are our next three classroom cities that we have coming up over the next few months. Um, and we are working on a location around KBiz as well. So stay tuned for that. Now, last note about training, because you're gonna, probably gonna say, okay, Vanessa, this is enough about training. There's so much. <laughs> we, have two, <laughs> we have two brand new classes that are e-learning courses that what happens is when you purchase them, you have access to them for six months. And I'm actually gonna give away one right now. All right, so you guys do me a favor. Do you have your phones handy still? Yes. Um, if you do, you can scan the QR code right in the middle of the screen. Or Amy, if you're on the line and can send the link, there is a form that you can fill out and it's two simple questions. I just need to know your name and your email address, that's it. And I will draw a winner in just a little bit and email you. Now, these classes, I should mention, they're, they're shorter than our traditional classes. Um, there's one called Picture Perfect and one called Presentation Techniques. And these were built by demand because people were like, I know 2020, I just really want to take it to the next level. I want to learn how to render. I want to learn how to leverage those 360s. I want to get better and better and better at this. So that's really where these two classes are. Um, if you're interested in those, definitely scan that QR code and you have to, only the people in the session get the chance to win a free course, but I'll contact you soon on that. And then if you haven't heard, did you guys see this contest that's coming up? Um, a Lens of Quartz, it's a brand new catalog in 2020 design that you can enter into and they've got some big cash prizes, two, three and $5,000 prizes. So the contest is open right now. I believe it closes early, or no, middle of November. So you still have time. Um, and they just want you to use their catalog in your design. So hopefully we have a winner that way too. And you can walk away with a little extra cash. Love it. You can always reach out to us too. Social media, our website, there's all the places. Um, if you'd like to reach me, the easiest place is residential.training at 2020spaces.com. I need to say a super huge thank you to John and Emily for talking through some pretty wild examples today. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was our pleasure. Anything for you all. Thank great. you, Vanessa. You guys are awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much.